Greetings, and welcome back to another installment of Modeling with Dan. Ever since I was a little kid, I've been obsessed with the look of the Burlington Northern Wide Vision Cabooses, particularly those that were rebuilt in the late 80s and early 90s. There was something iconic about these last era cabooses operating on the Class 1 mains, with their striking paint schemes and modernized car bodies with the plated up windows. I was obsessed with the look of these cars, and I had always wanted to have a model of one of these, but had never actually gotten around to either purchasing a model or building one. In terms of available models, there's been a real black hole in the market. Overland Brass released a few of these cars years ago, however these are very hard to find, highly sought after, and usually cost a lot of money, if you can even find one. My only other option was to kitbash one, which I wasn't too keen on, uh, either using an Atlas car like this one, or a Walther's Capola Caboose, uh, both of which would take too much time and would cost a lot of money. Now entering the Tangent Wide Vision Caboose, a brand new release from the company. When I found out Tangent was making models of these particular cabooses, I immediately jumped online and ordered one. This is the car I purchased, this is the 12509, as it appears directly out of the box. And I'm not even sure where to start because there's so much good I can say about these cars. These are exquisite models. They feature all very nice photo etched walkways, all kinds of very nice end ladder and railing detail, all kinds of separately applied grab irons, working lighting, interior and exterior, couple lift bars, air hoses, realistic trucks, full brake rigging and underbody plumbing and detailing. The cupola has full interior and so does the interior of the car itself. Uh, there's all kinds of very nice details. The smoke jack and all the other little fine details are very nicely done along with the printing and painting except for one little defect which I'm going to point out here in this shot. Something I found interesting was that this caboose appeared to have some kind of glue flash off. It looks like someone tried to repair a portion of the cupola or actually tried to glue it down and what happened was they handled this car with bare hands with greasy fingers using cyanacrylate adhesive super glue and what happened was as the glue dried it created this really weird white flash off which ended up affecting the finish now this isn't a deal breaker for me I can fix this and I will show you guys how to do this it's a, really just a matter of using isopropyl alcohol and a q-tip to very carefully wipe the sides down. Other than that minor defect, the model was fantastic and it was going to serve as a very very nice centerpiece for the work that I was about to do to it. Now the prototype car I chose to model is the BN12555 and take a look at that fading. It's pretty crazy and as you're going to see it's pretty complex so this is actually where we're going to be starting this project off of. Now I chose a different number at first and ended up having to renumber this car to the 12555 first so this is where we're going to start the actual model modifications off. All I had to do to remove this lettering was just take a brand new number 2 X-Acto blade and I just very carefully scraped away the numbers on both sides and both ends of the cupola uh, until they were completely removed and ready to go. In terms of weathering prep here, what I need to do first is wipe up some of those fingerprint smudges and glue flash off that came from a minor repair that took place in this caboose at some point in time in production. All you got to do is take a little bit of 70% isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, dab it all over the model there, and very carefully work into those areas until you remove the fingerprints. After that, it was just a matter of prepping the cupola for removal. And my intention here is to actually uh, model some open windows. The first thing I had to do was remove the little hook on the smoke jack. Then I was able to very carefully prop up the cupola from the base. It's simply attached uh, with a little bit of glue at the base, and all you got to do is very carefully wedge the piece up, and it should remove. But be very careful working around it, because you do have those interior seat details, and you also have a little board there that you don't want to strike. After I got the cupola removed, this is what it looks like. You can see you can remove the roof, which makes it very easy to access the interior portion of this, which is what I need. I want to model an open window on one side of this cupola, so I'm actually going to remove the glazing and set aside the top portion of the roof for now. To actually modify this open window, what I'm going to do is simply take a pair of nail clippers like these here, and I'm going to remove the interior struts for the windows, right? This is the easy part. All you got to do is just simply remove that section, 
Then what I can do is later on come back with a brand new number two X-Acto blade and I can shave away uh, a good portion of the silver bits representing the framework of the window. I'm not removing all of this because I'm actually going to reframe around the existing bits and I'm going to put my own clear glazing in there to look like the windows are slid back a little bit. There you can see I actually cut a little piece of clear styrene and that's going to serve as my new window. It's going to mimic the look of a window slid back a little bit. After a little bit of styrene work and a little bit of glue and careful work, I was able to model these open windows on the cupola and it ended up turning out very good. So with that being done, I was able to very carefully reassemble the entire cupola and then test fit it back onto the model until I was satisfied with the fit and finish. As you can see here, it looks very nice. It's just a nice little authentic detail you can add to a car like this that adds a whole other level of detail. Kicking off the weathering process here, we're going to be doing a very complex combination of paints to actually fade the car down. The real caboose has a very unique lime green faded tinted paint uh, with just a hint of a yellowish tone. And this is something unique to these BN cabooses and some of their hoppers. First things first, I masked off all the windows on the caboose to prep it. I don't want to get any paint on those areas. And the first thing I'm actually going to work on is those bright yellow ends. Using a little bit of white acrylic mixed with 70% isopropyl alcohol, I'm going to start spraying the ends, both ends, at different angles. I want to make this nice and dulled down. The prototype has again very faded paint, so I'm going to be very thorough in building this paint layer up on both ends. Once I completed the ends, then it was time to work on the sides. And again, this just is going in here with this paint, and I'm hitting it at all these little angles, uh, trying to cover the cupola first and the roof, and then very carefully working the paint down the side of the car. As you can see, it builds up very, very quickly, and it gives us a nice base coat of paint to be able to work with. We're going to be adding layers over this to get the correct paint color. And at this point, everything's looking pretty good, and we're ready to move on to the yellow. This is just a little antique gold now, and it's diluted the exact same way with the 70% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm just going to be running this through my air gun at 40 PSI, covering the entire model except the ends. Now at this point, what I'm doing is I'm starting with the cupola first, and I'm working that color over all the or raised details around the windows, for example, on the top of the cupola and on the little corners where the cupola itself connects to the car body. These are all very complex angles to work around, so I'm hitting these first and then blending the paint around them to get a nice even coat of paint on the entire car. Once I do these complex angles, then I can work on the easy parts like blending over the roof panels, for example, and then very carefully working this paint down the sides. One thing I am being conscious of here is not to get any of this yellow paint on the ends. I want to keep the ends pure white here. I'm not going to be doing any other paint treatment to these other than grime weathering. I want to maintain that nice bright white fade to this. I'm only focusing at this point on the actual green. And you can go in, dull coat all of the white first before doing this step if you choose to uh, do the caboose this way. Uh, but I was feeling brave and I decided to just go in here without masking it or sealing anything up and then just very carefully working this color around the ends avoiding to get any of that paint on the ends. Here you can see it's starting to take a little bit of shape. Again, once I'm satisfied with the blend of the paint, then I switch to another angle and another side and then just very carefully start blending that paint out. It's very important that you make nice, thin, easy passes on the entire car body because if you hit any certain areas at different levels, uh, you'll get mismatched areas of paint fade. And on model form, it's very unrealistic. Even though you do see this kind of patchy fading in real life, in model form, it doesn't look right. You really want to make sure this is all faded very evenly. It needs to look like this was actually painted as a base coat. Uh, and this is going to give us a really, really nice yellow tinted green that's going to be built up further with following colors here in just a second. Again, I'm just making some very nice, light, even passes. You'll notice that the trucks are still attached to the car at this point, and that's because these have electrical pickups, which are hard to disconnect. And I didn't want to try to disassemble all this for the model, so I decided to just keep those on. And later on, I would come back and spray grime on these areas anyway, so I would just decided to uh, leave the trucks on at this point, and then later on, I'd go back, clean those up, and uh, re-weather them with grime coat. 
again it's starting to really really take shape here uh, we're getting a nice light yellow tint but again this is just the second layer of paint next up we're going to start making a very unique minty green or rather a limey yellowish green and it's been mixed together with these three acrylic colors seen here after I sprayed the color on this is the resulting color that I got Again, you can see I was very careful not to get any of the green on the yellow ends. I only worked on the car body and the surrounding areas, such as the roof and the cupola. Now, on the next step here, I went in and added a darker green, and this was the final finish to the car. After I sprayed a dark mint green over everything else, I was then able to go back and clean all of the Burlington Northern lettering and stenciling off on the sides using a Q-tip and a micro brush bit of a tedious process it does take a little bit of time but it was worth it in the end and it saved me a heck of a lot of time compared to having to completely re-decal the car after the paintwork was done so it did take a little bit of work to get that fade just right but after using five different shades of paint and five different layers I think it turned out pretty good and we were able to achieve the proper color that's all pretty much prepped and ready for the next stage which is going into the grime now the prototype has a lot of grime on the underbody, so this is where we're going to be starting off. I'm going to be using a mixture of earth brown and dark black acrylic mixed with the 70% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm doing a very, very thick wash of this paint. It's pretty thick. So what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm starting at the ends first. I'm going to start working on getting the kick up on those end sheets, those guards that are on the railings. This is an area that kicks up a lot of grime and a lot of dust off the rails. Wheel spray from uh, felling rail cars, locomotives for example. A lot of that grime gets sprayed up and it starts to work up the ends there. Not so much on the interior portion like around the door, it just really gets caught on those door guards, like those little pieces on the end. So this is really where I'm concentrating the airbrush work here at first. I'm just doing very, very light spritzes of paint, and then I'm going in and trying to hit them and blend them out over the coupler box on both ends. A little bit tedious here, but it can be done. Uh, you just have a steady hand holding the car in one, and then you have the airbrush in the other hand. And then again, I'm just going in. I'm making very light passes to start with. This is just a base effect here. Later on we'll go back in and do a little bit of oil and powder work and a little bit of splatter to really accomplish the proper kick up spray on the ends. Next up I started to work on the underbody and again keep in mind I can't really remove the trucks on this model so I decided to just keep these on for now and then come back and clean these up later. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm working on spraying all of that grime up onto the coupler pockets around the walkways there, the steps, and then I'm working all of that grime into the underbody details. All of the ribbing, channeling, conduit, all of the piping, brake rigging, underneath the trucks as best as I can. I did add a little bit of masking tape to both sides here just to protect them. It should also be noted too that before I did any of this grime work, I did seal this caboose up with three coats of Tester's Dull Coat, and this is to protect all of those layers of green paint that we've applied and this is obviously very important because if I was just to go in here and then handle this thing after all that paint was applied uh, my fingers would be leaving fingerprints through I'd be streaking some of that paint back off and then we'd have to go back and start the whole thing over again so it's very important before moving on to this step that you seal everything in place with dull coat which is what I've done here I then added the masking tape to the sides to protect the sides and then very carefully took the airbrush grime and worked it into all those nooks and crannies working at various angles until the entire underbody had a nice even coat of this grime. Here you can see it's turned out very good and at this point I've added some new numbers off of a microscale decal sheet for the appropriate car number and I've also added the real DOT safety striping. Next up it's time to go into the actual oil washes and this is always a fun step. I like to use burnt umber oil mixed with a little bit of clean strip paint thinner and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a little bit of a light dilution of paint and I'm going to start working it into the step walls. These areas are a high traffic area, they gather a lot of dust, grime and dirt off of boots and just the general weathering off the rails. So I'm just going in here with a liner type brush brushing the paint into these step wells and then very carefully pulling it up and then working it back out. Here on this end I'm going to do a slightly heavier wash to kind of speed up the process and also for the sake of demonstration I'm just going in here applying the paint right where I need it to be and once I'm happy with it then I can come back in with a little bit more thinner 
let it pool up just a little bit, and then just very carefully work that paint back out. Moving on to those coupler boxes, I've now switched up to a fine tip brush, in this case an Atlas 10O, and I am doing a very thin wash again here, mixed with quite a bit of paint, and I'm going over the top of the coupler pocket first, then I'm going to work that paint onto the surrounding areas around the coupler box. I'm going to be working it up onto the little strip that runs underneath. It's really the base for the handrails uh, that's right in between all of those other little parts. I'm also going to work some of this paint up on the coupler lift bar, on the bracket, on the air hose. It's just important that you work the paint out nice and even without removing too much paint. You want to make this look nice and smooth with these washes. After I was satisfied with that, I was then able to move to the roof and the car body. Starting off with the roof here, I'm again just using a thicker liner brush and I'm doing a very thick wash of oils on the top to prep the entire car body. Uh, this is always a fun step. Uh, the key here is just to take the paint and work it into all those little seams. Uh, the top of this roof has a lot of fine bolt detail, weld seams, and little batten strips that I want to make sure have a proper amount of paint applied to them really to highlight those details. There's also some nice little photo etch pieces where the uh, old roof walks used to be. And I'm adding a little bit of paint to those areas too and then very carefully blending the paint back out once I'm satisfied. Further demonstrating the technique, I'm now working on the top of the cupola on that roof around those little handrails and around that firecracker antenna. It's just the same process, but again there's a lot of nice little details like these bolts for example, uh, little weld strips, and then of course the corrugated panels. Uh, these are great areas that really get highlighted well with this rust wash, and it's very simple and very easy to do. I had the entire roof of this car done in about 10 minutes, at least the base coat of wash here. There you can see I'm just carefully blending it out. Once I got that done, then it was time to start working on the sides. On the sides themselves, what I chose to do was a very thin wash to start. I just kind of wanted to gauge how much paint I was going to need for this. This is also going to be the final color finish for the sides. That grime tone is going to give me the exact green, faded grimy green that I was looking for. So the wash really helped to accomplish that final color finish. And it also was obviously the base coat for the surrounding, or rather the following rust that was to come. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of streaking, a little bit of rust grime buildup and things like that on the sides. This is just the prep work here. I'm working it over the sides and all the little nooks and crannies into those little seams, the little separation area between the roof and the sides, and also working it onto the cupola side itself there as well. Here you can see I'm just very carefully blending the paint out. I might gather a little bit of thinner here and there, and then I'll go back in, blend the paint out, and I'm just trying to work out all the little brush strokes and things like that, just leaving a very subtle rain streaked effect on the grime. But there you can see it's giving me this really nice light grimy color. Next up it's actually time to model the rust streaking and on the particular prototype there's a heck of a lot of rust coming down from that chimney so that's going to be where we're going to start. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take full strength burnt umber oil, I'm going to take a flat bristle brush here and I'm just going to very carefully start streaking the paint down from the chimney to start off with and then I'm going to very carefully work it down the side. And as you can see I'm just making very fine lines to begin with making basically very light passes with the full strength paint. As I work it down the sides, it's the same process. Even though the streaks are a little bit longer, I'm just trying to keep these as straight and even as possible. And even though you can't see it behind my hand here, I apologize, I am making very straight lines as carefully as I can. Doing the rough line first, and then in a second here I'm going to come back in and I'm going to take a large, flat, soft bristle brush Load it with thinner, and I'm going to pull some of this paint down to kind of blend it out a little bit. Just doing a little bit of oil rendering to model some realistic rust here. Again, you can see there's a lot of rust coming down from that chimney, and I actually overdo it here, to be honest with you. But later on, we're going to have to go back and fix this, and I'll show you guys what I end up doing to do that. But this technique still applies here. I'm still going in. These techniques work very, very effectively to model rust streaks on the sides. Now there's also some significant rust streaking coming down from that little area above the truck. Uh, a lot of grime and a lot of road dust gathers in these little seams and these little compartments and little welded areas. And in this case I'm just modeling the individual little rust lines with a fine tip Atlas 10.0 brush. And I'm just streaking some burnt umber oil down. The paint is just diluted very, very slightly with a little bit of thinner here. And you can see it gives me some very realistic and convincing little rust streaks. 
Now it's time to move on to the actual rust rot on the roof itself. And this is an exciting part here. I love doing roofs on these cabooses and boxcars and things like that because it really is a great showcase of the rust techniques and all of the cool little tricks and ticks uh, you can use for these roofs using oil paints, for example, even acrylic paint sometimes. Now, I will admit to you guys, I did struggle a little bit at first with this roof, as you'll see. I was trying to create this patchy rust effect using the burnt umber oil and another flat bristle brush but it ended up just not being exactly what I was looking for so I kind of just kept applying the paint randomly here and there and just continued to kind of work it out and some parts I dry brushed it a little bit and some parts I added a little bit of thinner to kind of stretch the paint back out and what I ended up doing later on and I did not film this step but I actually added a lot more paint than I pretty much initially thought let that dry and then I went back and actually added a little raw sienna to the roof I pretty much let all that dry and then I very carefully blended the paint back out with a little bit of oil and another soft bristle brush and in a second you'll see the results of this but as you can see at this point I really wasn't getting too far with this base rust effect but this is still a very good way of modeling rust on boxcars and other caboose prototypes but in this case it just wasn't giving me exactly what I wanted so after doing the other following techniques that I wasn't able to film this is what I came up with and for the most part I'm relatively satisfied with the rust on the side now, I will say that that one rust streak coming down from the chimney got a little too thick, and I had to kind of sit on this for a little bit trying to decide if I wanted to fix this or not. What I ended up doing was I woke up on a Saturday nice and early, and I made a nice, weird, greenish faded paint mix like you see here using these colors of acrylic. And I very simply took a fine tip brush and painted a line right through the rust streak to try to break it up and make it look like it was not just one large streak of paint. Once I did that, I let all that acrylic dry and then went back and applied another light wash of that oil on the side to very easily fix the mistake. Wrapping up the project now, it's time to go into the powders. And powders are fun to do. Just like before we're using the airbrush, I'm going to hit up those coupler pockets first. And be careful in the step because there's a lot of fine little details under these cars that you can snag your brush on. There you can see I actually caught the coupler lift bar on the uh, right end of the car, or at least where my right hand is working, and I actually pulled the coupler lift bar out. Fortunately, it stayed attached, and all I had to do was glue it back in place. But what I'm doing here is I'm very carefully applying this powder using a, a roughly frayed out brush. I'm using Monroe Models Dark Earth. This is a very nice, grimy, dirty color ideal for these kinds of underbodies. You can use it on all kinds of different prototypes. And what I'm doing is I'm just working all of that powder and all the little nooks and crannies and all those little seams all over the brake piping, all over the air reservoirs, the valves, all the little separate details, trying to make sure everything was nice and evenly covered. And it's just a matter of being patient, taking your time, and very carefully working around all of those nice separately applied details. Once I got the bulk portion of the underbody done, I was able to then switch to the sides and hit the sides of these little details. For example, like the air tanks, the retainer valve, all the other little details. It's the same process. I just went in with the brush, applied a little bit of that powder. And in this case, I actually got a little bit up onto the sill of the caboose where I didn't want it. And all I had to do here was take a Q-tip dipped in a little bit of water, and I was very quickly able to wipe that dusty powder right back off, revealing a nice clean surface again. And finishing up, I went to the trucks here. And with the trucks, I wanted to do a nice even layer of grime representing the grime that you see in the prototype. So I just used the same earth brown color, blotched it all over the truck frames on each side, and then also worked a little bit of that powder into the wheels. Later on, I was able to go back in. I added a little bit of mud splatter to the trucks as well, replicating a little bit of road dust, a little bit of mud kind of gathered on the road during service. And after that, the model was pretty much completed, and I was done and ready to photograph it. And here she is, the 12555, all completed. Notice that rust is all finished now. Notice the BN green, how perfect that fade is. It came out absolutely fantastic. And I won't lie to you guys, this was a real challenging car to not only weather, but also to film. Uh, it took me many, many hours to do this, but I am super satisfied with the results. Uh, the car looks fantastic, especially with that open window on the cupola. I hope this video inspires you guys to try some of these techniques out on your own and also to encourage you guys to uh, learn from this and try these techniques out on your models.